It's 6.22. It's a disturbing twist on a story that has shocked America as the man accused of murdering 12 people in the Batman cinema shootings awaits trial. Scores of teenagers have been declaring their admiration for him on the internet. Let's join Sue in New York. Uh, morning, Sue. Uh, tell us more about this uh, really quite disturbing story. Well, James Holmes is facing 142 separate charges. He stands accused as perhaps one of America's most notorious killers. And yet on dozens of websites and Facebook pages, you have these teenagers expressing support, but also sort of identifying with him in some way. For example, they post pictures of themselves wearing plaid clothing. Apparently, uh, James Holmes was wearing a plaid jacket when he was arrested. They've also dyed their hair red, drawn pictures of him him and even put advice on how to write to him in prison. Now, obviously, on these postings also, there are plenty of outraged people saying, how on earth can you even begin to identify with somebody like this? And that is, you know, the question that you have to ask. Well, I went along to see someone who's regarded as America's psychologist, Dr. Jeff, and asked what he thought. To a lot of these kids, he may actually be a superhero because he represents that part of their psyche that they've always wanted to express. So why are these young people so attracted to Holmes? They feel isolated and lonely. They may feel angry. They may feel that they're not appreciated by others. Uh, they may be paranoid to some extent. So what should parents do if they find their children involved with these websites? It is a major red flag for parents to make sure that these children are getting some sort of attention, that they're getting some sort of mental health assistance, that parents themselves take control of this situation and begin a dialogue with their kids as to what their secret lives may be, what their fears or angers may be, what is going on with them at this present time that they would do something so horrific. My goodness, it is disturbing, isn't it? Um, but I suppose you could argue this is another take on people's fascination with infamy. We've seen people write to prisons, haven't we, for years? Yeah, sometimes called the, the Bonnie and Clyde effect, where women in particular may write to serial killers, even marry them uh, in some cases, but often, of course, have significant problems themselves. And what Dr. Jeff was saying, it's all about, you know, if you see someone who's very unloved by society and you feel unloved, there's some identification there. But you're right, it is linked. OK, so what's the, what's the very latest on the trial itself? Well, the very latest is that there are reports that Dr. Lynn Fenton, who's the psychiatrist who was seeing James Holmes, was disturbed enough by what she was hearing to talk to other members of the campus staff. But apparently it never went to the police because James Holmes actually dropped out of university about six weeks before the shootings, and therefore it wasn't under the university's responsibility anymore. The trial may not take place for a year, a year and a half even. Okay, Sue, so thank you.